so remote sensing can also help on that, especially on those remote regions. So this transformation on land cover due to action on land use is how, oops, sorry, <laughs> is how we see the, uh, and we can capture this on remote sensing, as you know. So this is, is, is something that is being uh, widely done in the region. So, um, so that's also remote sensing there. So, I don't know. Yeah, maybe if I just go down, page down. I don't know. Well, yeah. So one one of the uh, big issue is how to monitor a country that size with the resource that we have. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, probably the. Yeah, the one that you have, it's uh, because it was done in Mac, so there's some change there, but that's fine. So, um, so just to have the, uh, an idea of the distribution of pasture and agriculture in the country, you see those regions here much more consolidated that we were talking much more about over there. And, uh, but, you know, it's basic pasture dominates most of the part of the country and agriculture is mainly dominant in the south and coming here to the Amazon. So what we're gonna see in the next maps are the past um, uh, 10 years of the Mato Grosso region, which if you could just maybe go back, oh, there we go. Mato Grosso region is this one here. We see a lot of the pasture here. Uh, some agriculture there, then 2010. And then if we look to this, so there's still a lot of change from, uh, over the natural vegetation. So deforestation is still an issue associated to the increase, most of pasture and then agriculture come, come later. Okay, so uh, the other big, big region, uh, and when I say big, this is two and a half million square kilometers, and that's the Cerrado Savanna in Brazil, and that's what where actually agriculture and commodity is really going on. So the Mato Grosso state that we saw before is uh, here. Uh, and that's how, and there's the edge to the Amazon. <clears throat> but one interesting thing that I would like to show you on this picture is that those are three different um, source of deforestation data for this region. So this first one was just the Galvan data they got. Uh, 2002 and 2007 just said divide by certain this amount inside of the deforestation each each year such each year uh, this other one was done by another another group so that's another issue so when I said that we we, uh, we need a good representation map is because this is common it's common to have outcome from different uh, um, uh, different source looking very different to deforestation there. So this is another big issue. Uh, so just going back to the Amazon. Can I ask a question oh, about sure. that slide? Absolutely. Are those different representations of deforestation from different types of approaches? Each of these different colors is well? Yeah, it, it's different color uh, because that's, uh, they, they the, 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 here is uh, square kilometers. Of what? So it, what does this is deforestation. deforestation. Ah, sorry. Yeah, sorry about this. Some are there's some Portuguese. Thing. <laughs> so this this matamento is deforestation. So uh, they're just different colors to um, because that's how the, this guy produced this. But in fact, if you go to the the, the higher range here, it's from 12 to 19 square kilometers uh, in this uh, in this period, 2002 to 2010. And this is 11 to 18, and this is 21 to 20 to 25 almost. But they're wildly different. They're wildly different. And uh, that's the one that the government prior used. So then the certificate will say, oh, you're wrong. You need to use this one <laughs> or this one. And uh, so this is pretty, pretty problematic. And one of the things of this is that um, a lot of uh, the, 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 the actions at the policy level and also, also in the finance for Bank for agriculture financing depends on how the the, the land is being used and uh, how how the intensification and that. So there's statistical data, but 
you know, you're talking about big bridges, so the remote sensing is, uh, is uh, important too for that. But we're still, uh, it's improving. So now what they're, they're, they're kind of uh, improving a lot this, but that was, you know, 2009, that's right there. It still was a big difference. Um, okay, so, and then when we see this, which is the decline of deforestation in the Amazon, and we're gonna see a little bit of why this happened, that's basically associated to this part, which is the edge of the Cerrado, so this is transition of the Cerrado to the Amazon. So if we go here, a lot of this is still there because there's no road. People cannot get there. There are people that live there there's, that has no contact with the external world, world thus far. So, uh, so the, the deforestation here is much, much lower. It's coming down here, and this Brazil is going to Peru, so this part is also being pressured as well. But a lot of that is due to access. So road construction, it's a big driver for uh, deforestation as well. But if we, if we look to another interesting aspect, so uh, only to commodity, the price of the commodity didn't really act in terms of increasing deforestation. So there's an interesting process going on, which is agricultural intensification. So if you get the average price of meat, the average price of soy, which actually capitalize a lot the landowner that produce meat or that produce soybean. But in that specific region, the deforestation has fallen. One question is that, so this is associated to, to the Amazon here, that graph there. One question here is the following, is that, is this production going somewhere else in Brazil? Which part it is? But there's also an identification on that. And if we see this, this graph here, from 1990 to 2014, and I apologize for this, not all of the same time frame, the, the data, they don't come always on the same time frame. But until 2014, there was an impressive increase of the, the, uh, the production in the cramp, and the planted area was not that, that same. So there is an improvement, especially associated to commodities. So this is an issue as well to think about. Um, but it's best associated to commodities. The area increased much less a third, which was increased the, the production. So, and what happened actually to the, to have this decline of deforestation, that specific region? And as I said, as we saw the big map to the south, the, the area of agricultural production is much more consolidated. So in this part here, so we have a big recession there. Um, and the, the, the commodity price was going on. So, and then we have the huge, this data here is, is very debatable, 95. People don't really believe in that, but you know. <laughs> but this was much more uh, certain. And uh, so this big increase that we deforest like almost 20, 27,000 uh, square kilometers in, which I don't know how much that's in miles, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, that, but that was a big issue. So that was a big international problem associated to that. And uh, so the government decides that those are political action, uh, decide to have coordinate actions towards reducing deforestation. So deforestation became a problem. Deforestation became something out of the law. So what the military said, you have to deforest to own the land, to, to be able to have the property of the land, it changed completely 30 years later on, uh, on, on the sense that, okay, we, you cannot do this anymore. So there's all the international negotiation, all the pressure over the loose of a tropical forest came down. So uh, associated to several, um, so improving the, 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 the technique to uh, identify deforestation and all that. So, and that kind of a sort uh, uh, had some effect um, in 2008, Brazil uh, uh, proposed in Copenhagen a specific target to reduce deforestation to 2020 to almost zero. But then what happened is that, that you know, we did reduce a lot. Um, then let's talk a little bit about, mention about red. This period here is the period that Brazil pledged for red reduction deforestation, so the, the uh, reduction emission from, sorry, nothing there, from here, 96 to 2005, 
this the mean of this is uh, 19 square kilometers 19,000 square kilometers so from the 19,000 to this one here is what Brazil actually pledged as um, as uh, red money but one issue here and that uh, no one really knows what the mechanism to do now is that we're still at five and a half thousand square kilometers per year we saw Mato Grosso there's a lot of things going on so it's not it's not it's not little it's a lot of land being covered being being converted so and and this we're gonna see with all what's happening now in terms of the economy, if we're gonna have another recession and that's gonna go down, or if the mechanisms to avoid, uh, the pol political mechanisms to avoid the, the increase of deforestation, they might be losing in a situation like this. So that's another uh, interesting aspect. And, uh, um, and what, what, what that made also, this reduction here, so we're talking about we're still at uh, 5,000 5, square kilometers, but agriculture has increased a lot. Talking about, you know, the, the, what is the country uh, profile of emissions for uh, the UNFCCC. Agriculture has uh, over plus the, the, for the, the, the change on land cover on deforestation in terms of emissions. Um, so there is, this is, a, we have produced only three national inventories and that's from the last one. There's a very big figure here, I don't, the only thing that, uh, that comes from the inventory, but you can see later on, on the, 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 the presentation. It's just that, and sorry, it's in Portuguese, so. but <laughs> you can practice Portuguese as well. <laughs> that's an opportunity, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a multiple, so yeah. So now we, we 32 percent of our emissions are associated to uh, to the agriculture sector, which there's some interesting outcomes of, out of that as well. So, and this is just to uh, give a flavor how agriculture and commodities are important in the region, uh, as North America, but in a different. Uh, so sorry, I, I think those are years. Uh, but you see how South America has become a very important <coughs> provider for food uh, recently. So this is the past uh, 15 to 20 years. So it's a very steep increase. And if we look to who is going to feed the world in 2050, there's a lot of uh, hope or certain in regions that are in, still have a potential to increase their production. So. Uh, we see that this can go up in terms of, uh, of, uh, uh, of producers. Okay, but as you know, uh, production of crops depends on several environmental uh, aspects, and uh, from genetics to, sorry the Portuguese again, genetics to all the environmental uh, issues there. So, and that's just to bring a little bit of flavor of what we're looking on in terms of climate change in Brazil. So those are IPCC, you know, broad global scale thing, you know, lower resolution, the whole thing changing to specific temperature. So those are RCP 4.5 and RCP, oh no, those just 4.5 and 8.5. Uh, so those are from global, pro, global um, um, assembly of global models. Uh, we are producing uh, earth system model in Brazil uh, and the INPI is the host of that. Uh, from so we are working on this and a lot of this is because the uncertainty associated to these global programs are quite big this is still global high, huge uncertainty but has some flavors of Atlant tropical atlantic and flavors of tropical uh, forests that uh, sometimes the global don't see that the, the other ones don't see that and this is just one that's the only thing i want to show about that is one outcome of that uh, running by this Brazilian model. So if we look only to the four, four uh, uh, degrees Celsius um, uh, curve here, if we think on um, eight, in an eight and a half RCP, we have pretty much 100% of chance of getting four degrees increase in the country in 2011. So this is an exact exercise from that, that global model. But to, to deal with agriculture, 
regional and at a specific state level or a regional level, we downscale some uh, global global uh, uh, models. So the Hadley Sand model here and the Mira, the Japanese one. Uh, so this is done in our institute as well. So the idea is to look to different uh, approaches of global modeling, see how much that effective impact at local scale. So this regional model is running in some regions at one kilometers uh, resolution, and um, those here are 40 kilometer resolution. And uh, uh, so that's temperature and precipitation as well. There's an, an interesting issue here is that uh, there's been a debate about Amazon as a forest providing water to the south, so it's a big issue. And, uh, and with the deforestation and climate change, that would reduce the amount of water coming down. But most of the model, they're pretty consistent in saying that the amount of rain in La Plata Basin, it's intent, it, it seems that it's gonna increase. So there's a heated debate on that. <laughs> All right, so, and then uh, using that as a, uh, a proxy for how risk agriculture in the country might be to a very you know pessimistic scenario, so which look into the uh, to the, the the worst case scenario here. So what we have rice uh, the distribution and the potential uh, risk actually the, the the risk high or low uh, in '99 due to several uh, climatological uh, uh, constraints that we saw before in 2085. In 2085, this has really increased a lot. So if we, if we go culture by different cultures, so that's beans. Rice and beans is very important in the Brazilian diet. <laughs> yeah. So we need to know about that. Uh, the corn, so a lot, the, the, the risk for the production, where today is the, 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 the stronger, uh, the, the more wealth, the stronger regions where the infrastructure is, it's quite bad. And, and then you're gonna say, why the Amazon is not, it's not, doesn't appear on none of this thing? It doesn't appear because um, the, the um, uh, how do you call that? The, um, uh, oh, uh, the, in principle, for uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, agriculture in the Amazon, in principle, is not allowed. So the zoning, the agriculture zone, the country agriculture zone doesn't, assign any agriculture for the Amazon region, despite the fact that we saw this going there, but it doesn't assign. So the simulations that don't look to that, maybe a little bit at the edge, but all, most, a lot associated to the Cerrado uh, biome. Okay, so um, we just a big list here of uh, risk and vulnerability that we're uh, thinking uh, over there also. So, uh, just always having in mind the changing land cover and land use, it's a big driver anyway. So the associated to, uh, uh, to climate also, so um, there's a neat, big issue uh, related to epidemiological um, uh, factors, uh, biodiverse as we know. Uh, food security, gonna look just to one slides on, on the, uh, the, the, the new structure of the, um, uh, the land cover in Brazil that, that is being proposed. Also, uh, always thinking on, on food security. Expansion of biofuels is a big issue. Um, then it works with sugarcane, so sugarcane expansion is still is a nine million square, nine million uh, hectares of about that of sugarcane in the country. It's much less than soybean, which is like 25, or uh, pasture that's 200. So, um, but still, it's, uh, it, it is an important uh, crop. Uh, there's commoditization, I, I hope that's a word, <laughs> of agriculture. The, the, the word didn't, didn't have in bread, you know. <laughs> so, um, and uh, so this is also an uh, issue that we, we tackle with the band. Um, uh, urban areas, so uh, we, the, the, the question on land, land cover and land use, so we are almost 80% urban we're going to that even in the Amazon. So the Amazon has 25 million people living there and uh, it's a little less, but 70% of that lives in urban centers. So um, Latin America is, is one of the continent that is moving from countryside to urban areas. It's more 
uh, it's, it's very intense. Uh, so this is still a question of land tenure that we mentioned a little bit about, and uh, uh, poverty is a big issue, and uh, uh, in a lot of this is safe to land cover. Um, so just briefly mention, this, this is a very busy slide, so I'm sorry. Uh, so the, uh, this question of forest certificates and the question of red, it's, it's a huge issue in Brazil because we have a lot of forest still, and there are mechanisms out there looking to uh, actually promote and hope and, and help this sort of initiative. So the, today, the, anyone that has a property in the country has to assign part of his property as a conservation unit, as a, a, a permanent preservation or a conservation unit in your property. And that changes depending where you are in the country. So if you're in the Amazon, there's a certain amount if for instance, how there's another amount. So for a fairly new land, so you just go there and buy a piece of forest, you can only cut 20% of that. We know that, that that's not happening, but that's what legislation say. And uh, so now uh, the, the, we're improving a lot on remote sensing techniques. The idea that the, 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 what the government, uh, well, the, the Minister of Environment has proposed is that those areas are uh, marked uh, and they are uh, they, they go to a database and they are that preserved data forever so if you if you assign to your property the part of your river that it's not going to be the forest you cannot do your son cannot do no one can do that because in thesis that's going to be preserved and that is part of what brazil uh so this is a there, this this group here from the university of minas gerais they do a lot of those exercises using remote sensing and mapping the country in terms of the, the, the CRA is the environmental um, legislation that uh, kind of uh, um, uh, organized the, 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 the properties. So uh, a lot of this is becoming a, a, a finance opportunity. So with that, we think that part of this can be part of what Brazil said that's going to do us for UNSCCC to reduce emissions can be accomplished. And that is, so this is just came from the, <coughs> we're not going to read all that, <laughs> this just came from the document that Brazil submitted to the UNSCCC prior to the Paris meeting last year. And then if you see that, it's just a little bit, so, uh, uh, so we, we want to, they plan to reduce 43% of emissions until 2030, which is a lot. But you know, we are agriculture and forests, a lot of emissions of forests are there. So they said, okay, we're gonna change uh, the, the forest. We're gonna, uh, somewhere there. Uh, but well, Brazil said it's gonna plant or re, re, um, recover two, uh, 12 million hectares of forest. That's a lot. Uh, we're gonna uh, recuperate 15 million hectares of abandoned and malfunctioning ecologically pasture. So a lot of what we said that we're gonna do, it's associated to forest and to agriculture. So there's a big work out there. <laughs> um, oh, there's a 12 million there. Yeah. And by 12, uh, by 1230, so uh, 2030, so it's not a very long time to do that. Uh, just a very, uh, almost, I think it's the, Almost the last one. So this is, um, so Brazil has put together a national plan for adaptation. One of the ideas is that can the country be a um, green, green power in terms of, can the country be uh, sustainable in terms of uh, uh, environmental uh, and also reduce the inequality and also uh, produce food and do things like that. So the national plan for adaptation, which is a, also, this is on Portuguese, but which is also a legal uh, uh, um, <coughs> effort uh, from the government. And I, and it's here now. I'm just I'm not promoting the government at all. It's just things that the that the country has uh, trying to put together, and that we've been helping on this, on on doing the climate simulation, doing the remote sensing, and allocating areas. So models of land use change and land cover change. We've been running this and scenarios of that to see how they can meet those, uh, those compromises. 
And the national plan for adaptation, I just would like to, uh, to highlight, is that the national plan is based on ecosystem and ecosystem service. So that's, that's what, uh, if you want to think about adaptation of health, how that meet, uh, how, that, how that can be met associated to promoting ecosystem service in that specific community. Uh, if you're thinking on infrastructure, how the infrastructure self sector can think on green infrastructure or uh, uh, not, um, not uh, 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 or promoting or having a, a better um, association to ecosystem services at that level as well. So, and that goes to sustainable, to incentive to agriculture. We were discussing the other day, it's still very little, but Brazil has a national, uh, it's a low carbon agriculture plan. So if you're a producer, you go, so, okay, I'm going to reduce nitrogen and fuel emission. I'm going to reduce uh, carbon. I'm going to sequ uh, um, uh, sequester carbon in the soil. So you can go for a lower uh, rate, a lower uh, tax, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you know, the, 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 it's a cheaper money if you do that. It's still in a small amount, small amount but it's still uh, it's a cheaper money. Anyway, so that's, uh, all right. So that's just, everyone would like to thank about that. And I would like to leave you with a, a landscape close to where I live. <laughs> Maybe you wanna come someday. <laughs> thank you. We have time for uh, a few questions. And unfortunately, we do have to uh, cut discussion off at about tip, in about five minutes because we're headed to the airport. <laughs> Sorry about that, yeah. Yes, please. So, so how optimistic are you that Brazil can start to work towards some of these sustainability goals? Uh, uh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Very optimistic. Now I am, uh, I, I'm still optimistic. I think um, there's a big effort uh, on the... Uh, on having a, a tropical agriculture being produced in a better way yeah. uh, because that has environmental costs and there's this pressure on that, but also it's, uh, it's, it's, it's more profitable. Uh, we used to do uh, regular agriculture that, was, so that brought from Europe uh, to Brazil. So plowing was a, was a big issue, you know. So, and organic matter in soil just disappear because of all those bad actions. So I think there's, a, um, there's an interesting hope on that. The recover of uh, 15 million um, uh, hectares of pasture, because pasture degradation in Brazil, we saw those images in the Amazon. So it, it's, it, uh, that, the pro productivity of that is very low. So it's not, it's not profitable at all. Uh, so that's something that uh, some people think it is too optimistic by 2030. Mm -hmm. But I talked to people at the, the sector, they said, you oh, know, this can be done because also it's something that uh, storing carbon in soil and doing a better management, increasing productivity itself, it's much. So today, that's a general number in the country, changed a lot by regions. But you have uh, one less than or maybe one head per hectare or less than that in the pensaries. So the productivity is very low. So in that sense, I'm, I'm a bit optimistic. Uh, a lot of this is political. Uh, there is, you, need, you need a political strength to implement some of those actions. Uh, and uh, uh, the political moment is not the best. So we don't know what's gonna happen. So the 1220, when we need to start reporting, Everyone needs to start reporting 12, 12 tidy. I think the, the scientific and the technical structure for that is there. Mm -hmm. So all the elements, so the, there's a good engagement with the community. Uh, but you know, the implementation of the actions towards the reduction, um, I think it's a little bit, um, it's not pessimistic, but it, it, it's a little bit in, in, in question today. Mm -hmm. Looking at, you know, sort of the, um deforestation rates, the difference um, between the various reporting of deforestation is really a huge problem, not only in, in Brazil, but other places, because of how you actually can observe the change in canopy 
versus the you know how much stem wood that you actually have. Mm -hmm. Are there efforts now to actually to to incorporate more on the ground observations or or lidar informations on forest structure mm -hmm. that can be coupled to the remote sensing where that way you can actually look below the canopy and get a better estimate of how much biomass mm -hmm. because that's what you're really after right. is the preservation <laughs> maintenance of the biomass in these forests mm -hmm. where you have you know you have this sort of I guess what you call it ghost deforestation or, or this hidden yeah. deforestation right. that's taking place that is problematic because you, you can have um, people stealing these trees. Absolutely. Um, no, you, you're fully right. What, what, what happened, is, it's interesting, in, in, in the Amazon, so the deforestation number that we, we it's seen out there, and it's, uh, that's produced by the Institute, is clear cut. Mm -hmm. So like I say, it doesn't capture that process, the deforestation number, but the forest degradation number does capture that. And uh, one thing that, uh, that uh, helped a lot, actually, uh, the, uh, especially for the Amazon. So in the Amazon, you don't see that strong difference as you see in Cerrado, uh, because the Amazon's being monitored longer ago, because a lot of the international attention, so it's a kind of emblematic region. And uh, what happened in uh, late 90s or early 2000s is that INPI just opened all this, the data. So all the broad data, the, the satellite data, so including INPI was the first one that opened Landsat data. So that was the, that changed a lot. The way, so the, the you know, the NGOs, the, you know, the university mm -hmm. can check the, the data and see if INPI is doing a good job or not. One thing that is nice about this over there is that a lot is not, is not, is not automated. Um, uh, it's not computer learning um, observation because it's still, you know, uh, uh, you're still able to hire people to do that. So there's a very, there's a big group of people looking to little uh, pixels of, uh, of satellite. So in that sense, uh, the Amazon is much more, um, the data of the Amazon today is much more, uh, Certain, mm -hmm. the uncertainty is less. But you're right, we're running a lighter uh, experiment in the region. So we're going to fly uh, uh, almost 1,500 uh, uh, transects in the whole region, looking not only for native uh, forests, uh, natural forests, but also to degraded area where the, the selected logging, logging is big. So you have the, the, the part of the, the, the major problem is the, uh, the illegal selected logging because you have also the forest management that they do in some regions there. So, and for Sehad is another, it's another big issue. So then you have a really problem of, uh, of, uh, of identification of a, what is a forest, because there's, you know, the, the, the structure is different, it's not that green carpet. So you have a green carpet and you have a, a less green carpet, sometimes a forest and no forest. But in Sehad, in the dry region, in dry areas, it's much harder then. So, uh, but the effort is still, is in the Amazon. So like uh, uh, for the first, so like Norway, when they say, okay, we, we, we want to put some money somewhere to preserve forests. And they put like a billion dollars in this fund, which is the Amazon fund. So it's the fund specific for the Amazon region that to actually promote um, activities or a change in production chain or doing stuff, a lot of it is small communities as well, uh, but for the Amazon still. Yeah, I like that figure. Well, I didn't like it, but I was impressed by the figure that showed the food surplus and food deficit areas of the world. Mm -hmm. And it's fairly coarse grain. It shows Asia, for instance, as being a very large food deficit area. Mm -hmm. And is that representative of China as yep. well? Yes. That's terrifying. Yeah, it is. To me, you think because they, they don't have enough food, but they're generating a lot of money there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imagine the effect this is likely to have on world food prices okay. and what effect that might have on the Amazon right. and the effect that it might have on other food shortage countries that are not increasing their economy at the same rate mm -hmm. as China. Uh, it doesn't look good for those areas, it seems right, right. to me. That's, yeah. you know, that, that figure has a lot of, 
or frightening implications embedded in it. I think we ought to yeah. look at that harder than us. No, especially with the, well, both Asia and Africa. Yes. With those food deficits. Right. Well, and the, the Africans are going to come up on the short end of the stick. And they're not going to have the money. Yeah. And you look at and the food prices, prices go up. High population growth. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Right. Western Europe was also nothing personal. Yeah. <laughs> Western Europe was also yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you, know, for, you know, for a long time, they, the world has adapted to that. There was a lot of wealth in Western Europe. Adapted. I, I appreciate what you're saying. I wouldn't, it's, it's here now. Yeah. We're dealing with that now. Right. But the pressure is likely to become greater. Yeah. Right. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. The trends continue. The pressure is going to become greater. And the losers are going to be the food insecure countries that are not developing economically very rapidly as food prices change, and the other is going to be areas like the Amazon, which have the potential for some sort of agriculture, perhaps. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be more and more difficult to resist. No, absolutely. I think, and and also, if you look to this uh, this global allocation uh, models, uh, food allocation, so the production. Yes. So a lot of that uh, it takes into account is still. The area to expand in in South America a lot, and a lot of that is in, in the, not in, in the Amazon a little bit, but in Sahara the region is amazing. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for that, that comment. Unfortunately, we have to um, yeah. cut things off. Um, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you. Thank you. So it's always a pleasure to meet someone. Tom. Oh. World's second greatest football nation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we used to be the first. But I know, well, my wife is already catching. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're good. Now you're good. All right. Good. Have a safe trip. I will see you this evening. Oh, yeah, that's right. Bye. Pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> It's um, invitation is open, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If I could talk my wife into it, I'm sure. She gets it. For my class, we have to attend presentations that we were interested in. Okay. If I need proof. Can I just take a picture of you real quick? Yeah, oh, sure. I'll take, awesome. I'll take a picture. I'll take a picture. Yeah. Sure. Uh, even with the thank you in the background. All right, with the beach there. Yeah, with the beach. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Hi, Michael. Right. Thank you. This is very interesting. I really